Mason Mount meltdown? Lissandro Martinez meltdown? Shut up talking absolute crap. Let's get to the bottom of what is really going on here and where the, the main protagonist of the issues are with this so-called Mason Mount issue. Lissandro Martinez back and going to Argentina. Freaking good. We need him back. We need him back actually carrying on his re rehabilitation. Let's send him to Argentina. And anyone actually concerned that he might not come back fit? Have you seen the setup at United? And what's going on with the injuries at Carrington right now? Let's get him out of there and get him somewhere where he can actually do good and actually get better. Oh my God. Tell you what, some people need to give their heads a wobble. Let's get into what is going on. I'm Adam. This is Forever United TV. We're talking Mason Mount, Lissandro Martinez. And you know what? There is some other real news I want to talk about when I've sorted this crap out as well. We'll get into that as well. Get in the live section. Get your comments coming in, everybody. And do leave your comments down below once the video is finished as well. Give the video a like as well if you want. Let's just go straight into it and get into some straight talking football instead of some fluff and crap and bollocks that's been going on this morning. My God. Ah, yeah, subscribe as well, guys, if you want. This is Forever United TV. FUTV bringing you everything that is real and everything that is just complete and utter BS because there is plenty of it. Oh, my God. So, let's get into what is going on, first of all. Mason Mount, for some reason, has hit the headlines. He's trending. He should be trending. He's back from a four-month layoff injured. We should be excited. A different player coming back for United in what is a crucial spell for Eric Ten Hag and the team to try and finish the season strongly. Something we haven't done for ages. So, yeah, Mason Mount should be trending. But for some strange reason, he isn't trending for that. He's trending because his transfer and coming to Manchester United is being scrutinised for some strange reason. Oh yeah, I'll tell you why. Because social media has done its usual digging and come out with what can only be described as the most pathetic sort of headline hunting tweet or whatever you want to call it, social media posts that you could imagine. Where has it come from? Search, scour around. Everyone's going in on Samuel Luckhurst today because it's come from the MEN. Well, not quite because the article has got absolutely nothing to do with what they've been said and what everyone's having a so-called meltdown about because, no, there is nothing really to report. Let me tell you exactly where this has come from and why social media is to blame for everyone supposedly having a so-called meltdown. <laughs> oh, good God, please, man. This team, this club, I tell you what, anyone could say anything and it would just be automatic headlines. Here is your story, and it reads with the title, Copying a former number seven could inspire Mason Mount at Manchester United. I am just going to read into some of what was said uh, in this one. Uh, in this actual article and where this line has been pulled from. It's written in the MEN by Samuel Luckhurst. He goes on through the whole uh, actual piece talking about how Mason Mount can come back, how he has uh, been the ever-professional with Manchester United, constantly communicating with medical staff at Manchester United, how hard it has been for him. You read through it. Uh, he has remained upbeat and positive throughout his rehabilitation. The United website cheerfully communicated a diligent professional. Mount has worked closely with, closely with the club's medical staff. That's a little concern. Uh, and displayed a work ethic that helps him to become one of the most decorated young players in the game. The England international's return to fitness will bring great energy to a squad and a former Champions League winner cannot wait to get started again. United are playing all the hits whenever Mount returns. He needs to hit the ground running. Scrolling further down, like most injured players, his stock has senselessly risen among the contingent of the fan base. Uh, as if Mount's dozen appearances for United should be struck from the record. No, he didn't get a good start and he's just stating facts here, Samuel. Uh, seven starts, five substitute appearances, one 90-minute outing, no goals, one assist. That goal contribution coming in the League Cup against Crystal Palace. Happy to hit the eject button themselves. Uh, Mount last, uh, lasted six starts in central midfield before he was relocated to the right-hand side. That stint against Brentford was even shorter at 63 minutes. Whenever Mount was started in the Premier League, he has made way with United drawing or losing. His last 
Uh, his last league start was against Brentford on October 7th. Mount may assume the bench-warming role if he is downgraded uh, to the art, uh, in the autumn in the spring. To in the autumn in spring. I'm not sure why he does that. But yeah, he's talking about basically Mason Mount. He start for Manchester United. What he's gone through so far on the pitch, it's not much. We haven't got much to talk about. We still don't know. We don't know why Ten Hag has brought Mason Mount to the club, what role he's going to play because he's always been on the bench and has struggled to make an impact, like Samuel said there. Kobe Mainu coming through, Bruno Fernandes, they're taking their spots as captain and the upcoming superstar in Mainu. He's talked about all of this, Casemiro, He's there, so Mount has got competition for places. Here's where we get the interesting bit. Mount and United felt a mismatch before he kicked a ball for the club, and he is effectively on trial. A source close to one of United players claim Mount's move to the club was not for football reasons, claimed back way when. That was in his move. So people have taken that one line, you know the line I'm talking about. I just said it then. One sentence in a whole piece talking about what happened then, how Mount was, uh, how Mount was, the signing was criticised. It was criticised from all angles before. So all of a sudden, because Mason Mount's coming back, because Mason Mount is trending, someone's picked a line out of what Samuel Luckhurst has been talking about on, on the MEN and built that up into... Samuel Luckhurst has just said this now. It's breaking news. It's an absolute load of crap. It's a load of crap. Samuel has definitely gone in on Mason Mount there as being underwhelming. We can all agree with that. No one's disagreeing with that because he has. He's not really done anything so far. And he's been injured and it's been really frustrating. But for people to act coming up now all of a sudden and bringing up a line that was talked about months ago because Samuel's put it into this article about Mason Mount and how he needs to improve and what he needs to do to help Manchester United go forward this season, then everyone really just needs to give their heads a bit of a wobble and actually just go, what, really? This is what we want to talk about right now? As a man's just coming back into the squad, do you want to destroy the, the lad's confidence just coming back? We need him to actually hit the ground running. We need him to actually start performing as soon as he comes back into this team. But yeah, all the social media wants to do is scrutinise a piece for someone because he's got a reputation and pick out the one damning line out of that whole that whole article and plaster that all over social media. You go and look on Samuel Lucas' Twitter. You go and look on the MEN Twitter. No one's talking there or highlighting that headline. It's just everyone else has taken it out of the read and put it out there like it's just been said now. It's not. It's in the midst of a full-on breakdown of how Mason Mount's career and time at Manchester United. And we know it was scrutinised when he was bought. We scrutinised absolutely everything. Absolutely everything from his injury record the season before, why we were so much in for him. And let's be honest, if it wasn't for football reasons, why would we go out of our way? Because the same newspaper has been talking about why Manchester United actually bought Mason Mount, counteracting what I was saying yesterday, how no one else was in for United. That same paper were talking about Manchester United competing with the likes of Jurgen Klopp talking to Mason Mount, with the likes of Arteta being an admirer of Mason Mount and interested in Mason Mount. But no, all you want to do is take out that one line and put that all over social media and let everyone else run with it and completely go in on the journalist that not many people like. I mean, I haven't got a problem with Samuel Luckhurst at all. Uh, I think he does re write, write some amazing pieces. I don't think he is the full-on Dark Lord, Dark Vader of Manchester United. I disagree on that. I don't agree with a lot of what he says, but I agree with a lot of what he says as well. It's the same with everyone. It's all about opinions. When you've got an opinion piece about a player, which a lot of journalists do, and then opinion pieces get spun up to high heaven as well, as to like, look at that, he's so negative. It's like what people say about me when I'm talking down about things. Well, no one talks about when you're trying to be positive. And the whole part of that for me and that article and that read was that he's going to play, he needs to do a certain thing, he needs to act a certain way to help Manchester United. There's nothing negative about it. He's talking about what was negative before and then coming forward now and actually saying he needs to be he needs to be an integral part at the end of this season. If he is going to be played by Ten Hag, and that's a big if as well, we need to make sure that we need to 
realise that it's not the journalist's problem or issue for writing these things. Ten Hag doesn't play him, then things are going to be written. It's like, you spent this money and made a big deal about bringing him in. Play him in the bleeding team. You find a way to fit him in. And hopefully he does bring something different for us. But it's complete and utter nonsense. Absolute nonsense how anyone can try and make a story and a negative about this. It is just a reputational thing for me. And people are looking into it and going, they've written some bad things before. Yes, we know that. All bloody publications do. I know I know from talking with certain media that in person and in private that a lot of what their bad rep is is built from hatred for them because they have said something and they're in the public eye. They're in the public eye. They're there to be shot down. So when they do have an opinion, just like me and you do when we're talking about it, they're there to be knocked down easier and then made an example of on social media. Social media is good for some things and bad for others. And I feel like this side of it for the media as well is bad because in a piece where it is predominantly positive, just bringing up facts and what we can do better and what he can do better, they've picked out the negative side of it and there's plastered it all over social media for clicks. And some other people have run with the actual meltdown side of things. It's not because someone has come out and leaked something. This was done a while ago and it's just been brought back now because all of a sudden Mason Mount's trending and people want to see what these so-called negative journalists are saying and then dig out the exact or the perfect negativity that they can from it. So, yeah, that, that for me is it with Mason Mount. Get fit, son. Get match ready and let's deal with it on the pitch and let's shut a few people up. Convince me that you was the right signing. It's, you know what? Half the time, and I've said this, and I've done videos on my channel saying this isn't Mason Mount's problem. I can't criticise Mason Mount. I can criticise the signing, but I cannot criticise him as a player. He has been brought in by Ten Hag. It's a Ten Hag signing. That's what it is. If there's anyone to blame for Mason Mount, besides his injuries, not hitting it off at United, it's because... The manager's brought him in and not being able to find a place for him in the team. This is on Ten Hag for me, the Mason Mount side of things. And why are people writing about him? Because he is coming back from a long-term injury. United are desperate. We're hoping that there is going to be something different in him and him coming back into the team that can change our fortunes from now until the end of the season. And he was made a big deal of in the summer. So everyone is going to write about him now. Ten Hag needs to find a way to get him in the team. Otherwise, he's going to look like a bit of an idiot for me because he could be sacked in the summer having hardly used him. And I know Mount's been injured, but there's been opportunities at the start of the season where he's not been able to fit him in. He's never been able to really grab form. And <clears throat> I just feel like it was a waste of money if you're not going to use him. And that was my whole issue with the Mason Mount thing. It was. <laughs> I'll get into your comments on this in a minute, but the next bit of news, obviously, is Lissandro Martinez. And again, just settle down, people, for God's sake. Like, seriously, it, there's news that he could be called up to the Argentinian squad. And in there, there's been discussions going on. Uh, I've checked it out. Inside the United has given me some inside info as well regarding uh, the situation where he's at with his fitness. He's still nowhere near ready yet. Uh, and he's going there just to carry on his rehabilitation. He's not going to be playing. United want reassurances that uh, he isn't going to be put at risk. <laughs> That's rich, isn't it? I said that at the start. Like, Lisandro Martinez going away to Argentina and United worried about him and how he comes back. Take a look in the mirror, United. And, yeah, if any United player is going to be going away to help with their rehabilitation, I'm all for it. Get him, a, get him as far away from Carrington as possible. We may get the player back in one piece. That's what I say. Uh, and if he wants to go, let him go. Do you know what? Keep the spirits up of the player. Him getting away from United for a bit will do him good. Don't start moaning about it now. God, God, man. Like, seriously, United should be all willing to send Lissandro Martinez away. He's not stupid. Argentina are not stupid. They will make sure that he's looked after. He wants to be part of that squad and train or train the best way possible. Just communicate and help him with his recovery. If he gets chance to play some practice game or whatever, then if he's at a stage that we don't know about and he's closer to playing and United are worried about him getting injured playing, well, he's only going to get injured if he's playing for United. It doesn't matter where he's playing. 
It's not going to give you more chance of getting injured playing for Argentina than it is Manchester United right now. You only have to look at the record for our injuries this season at United. United is the most dangerous place for anyone to actually be. Get him away. <laughs> Let him get some game time and fitness or whatever else he can do in his recovery. It's perfect. I'm happy with that. I am. It's like when players are coming back. I hate international duty because when players are fully fit and then go away, that's when I'm concerned. But when players are recovering, I think it's a bonus because what you're getting, if anything, if they're getting close to fitness, they're getting a bit of game time, they're getting match fitness in the legs without trying to, uh, without trying to uh, sort of bring them back into a side like United who are struggling and risking them on a risk-reward type of game because we're having to do go above and beyond now to get anything out of games. It's like throwing him right into the pressure cooker situation of salvaging a season to bringing him in easily or a bit, uh, well, a bit less dramatic and less stressful in terms of going on international duty and playing a friendly, whatever it is. Then I'm all for that. Just let him recover. And when he comes back to United, he's even more ready. So it's perfect. He's perfect for me. Just let him go and let him have his recovery time over there. It'll help him out. It'll help him mentally and hopefully it'll help him physically and we get back a better Lissandro Martinez. Let's get into the chat and see what you guys are saying. I'll scroll right up to the top, actually. Bring it down. Uh, Adam, apparently Darren Fletcher told Ryan uh, that Eric Ten Hag uh, drove the Mount signing. <laughs> We all know that Eric Ten Hag wanted Mason Mount. Everyone knows that. Uh, Gray, let me see what else we've got here. Uh, I mean, Adam, sorry guys. Yeah, in terms of uh, uh, coming on late, I was just reading through that story there. Like, I scoured the internet for the Mason Mount story. I'm like, no one's posted this anywhere. It's not on Samuel Lucas Twitter. All it is is a line pulled out of Samuel's piece on Mason Mount coming back from injury. And they've just blown it up to be something that it's not. It's ridiculous. Adam, I am pretty sure it was uh, it was to you, uh, the uh, lad ass. What? No idea what you're talking about, mate. Uh, just fill me in a little bit more on that, Gray. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm just reading through some of the old messages now from them. Probably sounded like I was going on a bit of a rant about Mason Mounts. Mason Mounts? Whoever signs... Uh, I can't say that, boxing straight talk. It doesn't sound right, does it? Good afternoon, you beautiful people. Hello, Colin. Hope you're well. I don't know. There's no way a player would know uh, a non-football <coughs> reason that would be in the boardroom. Can't understand what you mean by that, yeah, but um, there's no way a player would sign for non-footballing reasons. Definitely not. Uh, what else have we got in here? Uh, 60 million for an injury prone player that only left Chelsea because he wasn't paid enough. <clears throat> like I said, it's not Mason Mount's fault that he's paid the way he is and he's played the amount of games that he's played when he was available. That's United, that's Ten Hag. Uh, Ten Hag doesn't choose the wages or the price tag, he just wants the player. So if you want the player, you've got to find a way of bringing him into the side and making it work. That's the manager's point. Myrto, on the other hand, is in charge of making that signing work financially for the football club. Both failed so far. And time is ticking on both of their careers at United. So there's a perfect opportunity if Mason Mount is available now for Ten Hag to utilise what we all thought and hoped he was going to be getting out of him and why he was bringing him to the football club. Uh, Castaner is Adam doing a watch-along for the game. You both going? Uh, we are both going. Uh, no, I think Kaz is playing football, sorry. Uh, we're not decided yet if Kaz's game is on. Uh, I will be at the Liverpool game, guys. So if everyone is, uh, or if anyone is at the game, make sure you come and say hello. Uh, the paper round this Sunday will be live from Old Trafford, guys, in the build-up to the Liverpool game. So yeah, something a bit different. And don't forget tonight, guys, we have a special guest on the show as well. Someone you know well, and someone I think deserves to come back and. Uh, start talking football again. So yes, stay tuned for six thirty tonight, guys. Uh, it will be, uh, it will be different, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Thomas Old Trafford getting like a retirement home and a hospital for players. 
Uh, Michael, which social media, talking about Facebook, Twitter, or social media in general? In general, mate, mainly Twitter, though. Twitter is full of absolute uh, trolls, and the toxicity on Twitter is just on another scale. It really is. He is cover for Bruno. You can't sign a player for £60 million as cover, Michael. Sorry, I can't have that one. Uh, Lucas should be banned anyway. Uh, no, he shouldn't. He just, he just don't read what he writes if you don't like the way he is or the way he writes. Just don't read it. It's simple as, I think. Uh, it's like you said, if you don't want to watch, if you don't like Love Island or The Only Way is Essex, don't complain about it. Just don't bleed and watch it. <laughs> don't follow him. Don't listen to what he says. Don't read what he says. It's But all of a sudden, everyone wants to use him to make their own headlines on social media to big up themselves. Shut up. And just don't read it if you don't like it. It's as simple as that for me. Uh, you can have your opinions on it and everything like that, but like, it's, it's, it's sad how they're actually using it to actually make a headline. It's a joke. Mason Mount spotted at the chocolate factory carrying on his rehabilitation with Augustus Gloom and Willy Wonka closely super supervising him. Boxing Straight Talk, you're coming out with some weird ones today, buddy. Uh, it will be a forgot. It will be all forgotten tomorrow. Sad sack says, "Yeah, more than likely, more than likely." But I mean, uh, <clears throat> let me just check now what else we've got. Uh, great stream as usual, Adam. Smash the like button, people. David Duncan says, "Yes, please do, guys. We're over hundred likes already. Thank you so much. Let's get them likes up even more, everyone." Uh, please do hit that subscribe button if you are tuning in for the first time as well. And download our Sofa Score app, please, everybody. It is free to use and it is the best football app out there. Trust me when I tell you that. Scan the QR code in the bottom right hand corner or drop in the description. There is a link there right at the top. Sofa Score. Click on that. Fill your details in. Two seconds. It's free. Right to your phone. All of the updates for your club. And other clubs going all the way down the pyramid to the EFL, to the Nation League, all the European stuff as well, and international football, and other sports as well. The best stats that there is out there. Up to date, fast, quick, straight to your phone. Get downloading it now, guys. It all helps the channel as well, and it is the best. We use it all the time. Mason Mount was bought for commercial purposes. No, he wasn't, Daredevil. Uh, it's not a chance in hell any player is bought uh, for commercial purposes. Uh, Mason Mount really isn't that big a player. I actually didn't rate him as like a marquee signing. I think he's a good player, but he's definitely not in the sort of like we are going to make masses and masses of money from this commercially. He just hasn't got that pull, I don't think. He's not well known enough for me either. I don't... You say you can't spend sixty million over uh, in Mount Butts. We will spend fifty on Elise. Who does he replace Rashford or Garnacho? Who does Elise replace? Uh, well, if Elise is the player that Ineos want, then I'm confident they will do their uh, due diligence and make sure that he is the right player for United. I mean, we know he is. I mean, what I'm talking about there is it will have to be the right price package. We'll have to check all of that in injury record and that history and what the problems are and everything we possibly can to make sure it's right. He's not replacing Garnacho. He, I, for me, I would replace him, uh, I would replace Marcus Rashford with him. But to be honest, I think Elise is a player that's coming in, but we need another player to come in as well. It's not just to say that Elise is going to automatically replace one certain person in our team is to say that Elise is going to be part of a, a transfer structure this summer there's going to be a few people coming in uh, let me just see now I've, I do see if Elise comes in like Graham says there it's like even if Rashford survives this summer which I think he probably will uh, then Rashford's going to be spending time on the bench because I don't think you can drop Garnacho over Rashford right now. I don't. I think Garnacho, like we said, he's been hot and cold over the last two months for me. But I feel like he's better when Highland's in the team. So let's see what happens when Highland comes back. Personally, I think he offers more than Rashford this season in 
over the whole spell of the season. So Rush would have to sit it out on the bench. If we're buying an out and out right winger, then that's that player to stay there. That's it. Done. No messing. No swapping around in positions. That's what it needs to be. I live in Italy. I do admit my Italian postman is a Liverpool fan uh, and was giving me stick yesterday. And Italian Scalso for F's sake. Not good. <laughs> Christopher. Not good, my man. No. Hopefully, uh, he won't be delivering to you next week because he's in hiding and we managed to somehow pull off a, an amazing victory over the Scousers. That's what we need, isn't it? Uh, Mount was the wrong choice. Declan Rice was the player to buy. I said that all along, Stephen. People slagged me off for saying that Declan Rice was the man for Manchester United. I could always tell he was going to be an amazing player. Every time West Ham came to United, he was the best midfielder, even though West Ham were getting beat every time. He was still the best midfielder on the park. And he was there for the taking. Arsenal got him. And now look at him. Quarter final of the Champions League. Top of the league. It's not bad, is it? He's definitely moving places. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if the club wanted MM over Kim Min Jae. Mason Mount, that is. Uh, if Ten Hag say, uh, I want those two players. I see what you mean. He wants two players and he gets one. Club saying, we have to prioritise one because of the budget. Yeah, transfers are fine, but success depends on the manager getting the best out of his players. These players were doing well until they came to United. Brendan, good point. Very good point made. I wanted to move on to other news. As you can see at the bottom of your screen there on the tweet, uh, Rob Dawson reporting that Steve Brailsford versus Jim Radcliffe uh, are reluctant to let uh, John Myrtle go and will want him in some capacity in the football club. They have been impressed Rob Dawson says from ESPN, with John Murto. Impressed with what? I have no idea because we haven't seen anything. And maybe something behind the scenes, he's working overtime. Maybe, all of a sudden, because there's a new boss in the house, John Murto has actually started to work. This is usually what happens, isn't it? It's like the new manager bounce, but you're getting the new owner bounce right now. And everyone at the football club is doing overtime and working their asses off to try and prove that they are worth their job and them keeping them at the football club. I think that's the only thing that I can see with Myrto. He's going above and beyond. Now we're hearing that his visits to Spain and Catalonia over this week weren't necessarily just for trying to find a suitor for Mason Greenwood. It was a relationship-building mission. God, he went on a relationship-building mission to Saudi Arabia and came back empty-handed, didn't he, apparently, as well. It's like, I understand it. I understand there are people out there that need to do that, make contact, friends, friends, friend people up and make sure that when it comes down to the wire or when the nitty-gritty starts, then you are there, ready to go. You've got a point of contact. You need to have contacts. The whole issue with Myrto and what was being said in many articles and many pieces, was that he wasn't well-connected. He was underqualified for his role at Manchester United. He's going out above and beyond to try and prove to everyone, it would seem, that he is capable of doing this job and he is making it his point to get out there and meet delegates and representation of other football clubs, big football clubs. So, yeah, I, you can look at it whichever way you want to with Myrto. I don't think he's qualified He's looking like he's doing his best to try and stick in around Manchester United. You can't fault a man for trying. You can't fault a man for doing that extra extra, uh, extra yard, extra mile and trying to improve himself. But still, is he the best in class? Ineos like him. But is there someone better out there than Myrto? Yes, there is. So are Ineos going to stick to the guns on what they said in putting people in place that are best in class to bring the best out of it? Are they going to try and mould someone into a certain role? I don't think he'll have anywhere near the same role as what he's had before. I think he will be downgraded and kept at the club. And you know what? As long as he is doing that role well and it's not affecting the day-to-day -day running of Manchester United and the major decisions football-related, then that's OK, I suppose, if they want to spend money and keep him at the club as long as he's away from 
the big roles. I think it's a case of you can do your work there, probably learn there and get better get better at what you was brought in to do, which was something you weren't capable of and weren't qualified for. Ineos have maybe seen potential in John Murto in another area of the football club. But that's up to them. As long as he's away from the sporting director side of things and not involved in negotiations, then I think we're all right. Graham says, Murto building allowed uh, the signing of Garnacho. There are things he's drove well, but he's been over-promoted. Yeah, that's where he was at the start, Graham. Exactly. In a lesser role. He was originally brought in to work with the academy at the football club. And some things there, I cannot argue, like Graham says, have been done brilliantly. The academy is moving forward leaps and bounds right now. But the qualify, the qualifying criteria for United's roles at the football club, the jobs for the boys, employed from within, was a disaster waiting to happen. Just because you're good in this area and in this department doesn't mean you're going to excel in another. It's like Ed Woodward bragging, coming from doing major, major dealings in the banking and the finance world that eclipse anything in the football world doesn't mean that he's going to be able to negotiate a transfer of a player, and that's been point proven. This is the first time in nearly, what, two decades that United have employed from outside of the football club in key roles that have the operation, have the football operation side at, uh, at the forefront. It's like the CEO... The director of football, head of recruitment, head of development, head of academy, everything like that, we're getting employment from outside of the football club. And like David Gill said in his interview with Rio Ferdinand, that is a positive. That is a massive positive. And that is a change that we have to look forward to and hope that it is going to make the difference at the club. Everyone else has done it but United. And now we're actually finally figuring it out and doing it right just because the gym has taken over. It's, it's sad, but we cannot dwell on it. We missed an opportunity years and years ago, and now we're playing catch-up. At least we're realising our mistakes and we're moving forward in the right direction. That's what we've got to look at. Ramo, if Mirto and Ten Hag are staying, uh, this Ineos will be dead on arrival. Nothing will change. We'll probably waste £200 million on Don uh, Bobby, Bobby <laughs> an injury-prone delit, and write off another season. Now, they are in charge of the summer as it goes. It is Ten Hag's pre-season. He has organised this alongside United. It is Myrtle's transfer season. He's going to take charge of everything over the summer because nothing is in place yet. Unless United, like we said yesterday, pay the money to Newcastle and bring Dan Ashworth in. Now, if they do bring Dan Ashworth in, then it may change. But I cannot see Ineos allowing... Ten Hag and Myrto full exclusivity over everything that happens at United transfer-wise this summer. There's not a chance in hell that they're going to leave them to make all the big decisions. They'll have their say and they'll have control over both of them. So let's see what happens there. And this is, of course, if Ten Hag is in situ, if Dan Ashworth hasn't been agreed. It's all if, buts and maybes about what's happening this summer so far. Hopefully, we do see fresh blood and a new direction. But at the moment, it is Murto in charge as as things stand. And Ineos, with the reins on, controlling him, you would say. Murto has applied for the role to be the new mascot during match days at the new camp. That was for Prashant said that. Sweeney says the thoughts that Mason Mount was brought for anything else other than his footballing prowess is ridiculous. Never a true word said, Sweeney. 100% agree with that. Uh, Noe Murto is saying uh, I wouldn't sack Ten Hag. Murto can say that, but I think Murto would have learned while being at Manchester United that the most disposable asset out of anyone in the staffing system at the club is the manager. He cannot align himself too much alongside Eric Ten Hag. Otherwise, he'll go down with that ship. He knows that if they want to get rid of Ten Hag, he has to move in line with the next one. It's part of the job. He has to work alongside the next manager that comes in. It's just how football works. Uh, and Myrtle will know that. He's been, at foot, he's been at United long enough. And if there's any club that you know 
the manager is disposable, it's Man United. It is. So, yeah, he will know that Ten Hag's time is coming to an end unless results improve. And he will distance himself accordingly, I think. That's what I think Murtaugh will be looking at. Uh, but yeah, let's get you more get more comments in coming in on the Mason Mount situation, guys. Obviously, as well, Lissandro Martinez. Are you bothered about Lissandro going out uh, to Argentina for their upcoming internationals? I think it's a good thing. It's only a good thing for me that he's getting away from Man United for a bit. That's the way I see it. I do. Please give the video a like, guys, as well. We are coming up to the 150 mark. Well over 400 in the room with us right now. Thank you so much for tuning in, as always. And, yeah, I'm just getting through some of your messages now. Uh, I'm more wanting Ten Hag out than Myrto. Ten Hag is sending me to sleep with his football. Okay, guys, in terms of the football, like what can Ten Hag do for you to convince you over these next 10 league games... He is the man to take United forward and can do this under this new Ineos structure and regime. What does he have to do? Does he have to change personnel? Does he have to drop certain players? Obviously, he's been hampered by injuries, so he's not been able to fully utilise options off the bench or starting positions. For me, personally, I'll just go through it so it gives you an example of what I want from you and what I want you to say in the chat. But... I'd be dropping Marcus Rashford when Hoyland comes back. I'd be trying Anthony. Uh, I'd be trying Garnacho uh, and possibly someone else. Uh, I understand everyone's argument with Rashford and he can have that impact and that goal impact, but he needs to really prove now that he isn't the one-trick pony and he's not just playing Rashford because he has their moments and he can do something. That's not what we want to see right now. We've, we've clung on to that all season and it's got us here stuck in six. It's not going to get us any better in these next 10 games change it up does Bruno Fernandes drop out the side for Mason Mount does he risk dropping his captain is that a bold call that you guys would see that is Ten Hag trying to do something different or does none of it actually matter does him trying anything right now just look pure desperation to you and it's just too little too late because a lot of people will look at it that way I feel and there isn't anything that Ten Hag can do to change their minds. Make the right substitutions at the right time, says Amin. Uh, 10 wins out of 10 and he can stay. I'll let him, says Stu. <laughs> I think everyone's letting him stay if he gets that. That puts us on... What does that put us on? 48. Are we on 48? No, 47 we're on. So that'll put us on 30, 77 points and comfortably into the Champions League places. Man, it's like look, he's so far off now, but if United win all of their games, then we will qualify for the Champions League. It's in our own hands, as they say. Can we go on a mega run? Can this team convince us that we are going to go on a mega run and get Champions League football? He's stubborn, he'll do nothing. Anthony Wisdom says, you can only play one way with this current set of players, and that's counter-attack. We are crap in possession. We don't have the quality of player to try and improve, in my opinion. Play a front four of Garnacho, Ahmad, Rasmus and Mount. Bench Bruno and Rashford. See how that works for a bit, says the Muppet Show. Uh, drop Rashford and play with 11 players. That would be a good start, says Ander. Adam, how would you spend 10 million? Bring in Ashworth early or pay off Eric Ten Hag? Always bring in Dan Ashworth early, mate. Dan Ashworth earlier because the problem we have had is how we have spent money and the players we have recruited. Even with Ten Hag in position, he's not going to have that say. So if anything, you can bring another manager in, but it's still the old regime. I would always go keep Ten Hag and bring Ashworth in earlier. I wouldn't pay for Ten Hag to be sacked early now. I would definitely bring Ashworth in. That would be my shot. Good shout, that, actually. Good question. I like that one. Uh, Fred, I would pay Ten Hag off, says Boxing Straight Talk. Some, like I said, some people are just done dusted with Ten Hag. They can't stand his excuses. They can't stand his style of football. And that's it. There's nothing he can do right now. Minds are made up. I understand that totally, which is why we like to bring in everyone's opinions on the show, just to see where everyone is at. I personally... I cannot ignore the fact if he gets us in the Champions League from this point, which I don't think he will, I will have to be convinced and go, right, okay, he deserves another shot. 
you can't argue with that for me. That's just where I'm at. I personally still do not think we have got it in us, in this team, to get the results we need. Now, it could change with the players coming back. Like I said, this weekend, it is a completely different game. With wan coming back and Rasmus Hoyland coming back, them two positions are huge for United right now. That extra added zip, power and option up from, from Rasmus Hoyland definitely puts Liverpool back on their toes a bit. Stops them coming forward like City did to us because Rashford was just useless as a number nine. He's not the player you want as an out when you're defending deep, which we are going to have to do against Liverpool. But we have got an out ball now. That's where that changes. And we've got a better defence because having Dallo at left back is better than having Lindelof at left back. And always having Aaron wan a great defender, maybe you can criticise him going forward, a very good defender though, on the likes of Diaz, then that definitely helps us again. So it does. The landscape changes. The landscape moves when players like that come back. Then after that, you've got an international break and we've got Brentford. And all of a sudden, Mason Mount coming back into the side as another option. He's definitely uh, a plus point for us. I just think then we're probably looking at Lissandro Martinez coming back the week after. And then the defence is looking completely different again. You've already got everyone available then who can be available in midfield. And Ten Hag pretty much has got his full squad. So if you've got your full squad, and like Tenag says, if the process is working and you can win, let's say, for instance. So I look at it this way. Can United win their next two league games? Actually, I need to look at uh, United's fixtures as they come, actually, because they've all changed with the FA Cup, haven't they? So, right. So Liverpool on Sunday, then it's Brentford, and then it's Chelsea away. So two away games in London. That's where it sort of gets difficult for United. It really does. Actually, when it comes to the league games right now, we need as many players back as soon as possible because we've got Liverpool in the league, then Brentford away, then Chelsea away, then Liverpool in the league at home, and then Bournemouth away. Ouch! Ugh. God, <laughs> that sends a shiver down your spine, doesn't it? That. But it's like we said, it's like, can we get through Brentford with a win with what we've got right now? Yes, we can. That's us on 50 points, and we've got nine games to go. But in them nine games, you have wan Bazaka back fit, Lissandro Martinez back fit, you have Rasmus Hoyland back fit, and Mason Mount back fit. A third of a team there, different players with different qualities that we've just been lacking over the last few weeks and has really affected us. And you're looking at winning your last eight games of the season. Do I feel like we can do that? With them players in the team, United should be able to win them games. They should. So it is still in our hands. You're saying you're being overly positive, Adam. I know what you're saying. But I've got to look at them players coming back and what impact they can make. And I do think that they will. I just can't see us beating Liverpool and Arsenal. I can't. I just don't see it. I think we'll struggle against Chelsea as well. Surprise me. We've got a better chance with these players back in the side. That's all I'll say. Going into them games with them four players fit, I feel a lot more confident that we might be able to sneak something else out of them games. That's how I feel, and that's the positive I'm clinging on to. There is that reality side of me there. You've got the reality devil sat there, and then you've got the hopeful, wishful thinking one sat on that side, and he's like that. he got all these players coming back, and then the other side's just telling me, it's like, but we're absolute dog shit, and the mentality of these players is absolutely awful, so we ain't got a chance no matter who's playing. That's what it is right now. It's like, which one's going to win? Can these players come back, give us that extra bit of zest, that little bit more oomph going forward into these last 10 games, these last dozen games of the season? Are they Ten Hag's last games? I mean, I don't know. Liverpool at weekends are straight away going into an international break, having been smashed and knocked out the FA Cup with 9,000 Scousers laughing at us in an empty Old Trafford is not going to look good. International breaks are notorious for big managerial decisions to be made. Also, it's a long time to wait until that next game against Brentford. But if we go into an international break, having been dicked by Liverpool at Old Trafford, and the scenes of an empty Old Trafford and 9,000 Scousers sat there singing, that's not going to go down well, and that's going to linger 
all through the international break. Can they handle that? That's what you've got to look at. Uh, Josh says, we miss Leech so much. We do. Hey up, man. I uh, hope all is good. Uh, what's the latest uh, with the ground? Are we staying? We're moving. Uh, hey, Aaron. Love that name. If anything, the noises that are coming out uh, from what I know from discussions that are going on with the task force right now that is uh, <laughs> in charge of Manchester United's redevelopment or moving of stadium and the surrounding areas, uh, then... Uh, it's looking like a new stadium. So Jim will push for the new stadium, guys, 100%. Eric Tanag insists on playing Rashford regardless of his attitude. Doesn't help the mentality of the rest of the squad, says Michelle. That's totally agree. Marty Smith, uh, wowzers. But there is no what Radcliffe as a fan and Brailsford monitoring the performance are looking at this and saying yes. This is what we want. Nope, they are chopping this coaching staff. Yeah, Marty, I know, I know, I know. I have to sort of look at what can be done. Like, Champions League football is in our hands. Can this Man United side go out and beat Chelsea away? Yes, we can. Can we beat Brentford away? Yes, we can. Can we beat Bournemouth away? Yes, we can. We've done all of this already. Can we beat Liverpool at home? <clears throat> On any given day, that game, that hype, that intensity, the pressure that is Liverpool's situation and United spoiling it. You know United can turn up against Liverpool and do a job. We've got it in us. We really have got that in us. So I look at that and go, there is a definite possibility there. But you know how this team is. You know how frail, fragile it is mentally. And I feel like that's the problem we've got in convincing ourselves that we can win these games coming up. It's always going to be there. Build up to the game. We're trying to. We've forgotten about what's happened. Well, no, we can't forget what's happened in games. That's important. We have been let down by this side on numerous occasions, and why would it change now? We don't know. We don't know why. It's up to Ten Hag to try and get that all sorted. Uh, let me just see what else we've got. I know that's pretty much it, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, great crowd. Loving the likes. Thank you so much. Comments bang on point as usual, everybody. Cheers for watching. We'll be back later. Don't forget, a special guest show later on tonight at 6.30. Don't miss it. It should be fun and definitely something different anyway, guys. Uh, I will see you all there. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And up the Reds, here we go. See you later, everyone. <laughs>